y'all this is girl shay and i'm back here with another video today i am going to make some cheesy garlic stout potatoes and some steak for y'all first of all thank you guys so much for 13k on tiktok y'all are amazing y'all support me so well but let's get into this video why don't you try to use a cheese grater and you see i was trying like y'all i was trying and trying and trying but it was not working out and it took me a minute to just say just to give up on it so y'all I don't use a cheese grater unless yours is better than mine because first of all, they cut them too thin. Second of all, it rips the potato be like the top of it and I like snatch it out. And then it's like it's just not it's not working at all. So after a while, I just finally gave in and I started slicing them myself. Now you guys, you do not want these things too thick, but you don't want them too thin because if they're too thin, you're not really gonna be tasting the potato. You know, you're not. It really is gonna feel like you're just eating cheese and sauce. Like no. That's not gonna work. But you don't want it too thick because it's gonna take them forever to cook and you do not want some undercooked potatoes, okay? Trust me, you do not want no undercooked potatoes. So later in the clip, I'm going to show you guys the perfect size. Like that right there is the perfect size. Not too thin, not too thick, just right. Alright y'all, let's get into the sauce. I used about two tablespoons of butter and then I'm going to go ahead and let that melt into my beautiful pan. And then I'm going to add in about six minced garlic cloves, okay? So um, you can easily use minced garlic, but I use my um, garlic cloves. I'm sorry, I'm sure it's kind of twisted. But yeah, you want to go ahead and let that cook and get, you know, incorporated with each other. You can use onions, but people in my house don't like onions, so I opted, opted out on that. So yeah. Once I get that incorporated and I start smelling it, I went ahead and added in my flour. Now we're going to go ahead and add in that flour so we can soak up all that goodness. And it's going to look like we're making gravy, y'all, but we're not making gravy, but it, it is going to look like we're making gravy. So here you see I'm adding in my flour. You want to add that in so there's no more flour left. You want to cook out all that flour taste completely. And then after that, in this next clip, you're going to see me adding in my vegetable stock. Now you guys, I added this in really, really slowly because I wanted to make sure I was incorporating everything in there. Now, once I get it all incorporated, you're going to see me add more and more because I don't want to add it all at one time. So once it starts getting clumpy, then that's when I start adding more. You can add it in all at once, but I prefer to do it like this. It's completely up to you.
had seasoned our sauce. I went in with some black pepper, some Cajun seasoning, and some complete seasoning, y'all. I cannot let complete seasoning go for nothing. Like, complete seasoning, onion and garlic powder, those are my things. I'm sorry, it's going to be in almost every recipe that I use. But I do suggest that you season to taste because I do not use measurements when I season. So just go along and taste as you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in my heavy whipping cream. Um, once again, I didn't add it all in there at once. I did about half a cup and then I mixed it in and then I went in with the rest of the half. So we, once we mix this all in, we do not want this to come to a boil. Once you see that it starts to come to a boil, you want to take it off the heat and you want to go ahead and add in. I added in about a handful. You can do a cup. But I added in about a handful and let it melt in there. Now, y'all, please do not, do not be mad at me. I forgot to tell y'all, the preheat got up to 400 degrees in the beginning. Because by the time you finish all this, you want to just go ahead and pop it in the oven. Now we're going to go ahead and layer our pan. I suggest that you hit it with a non-stick stay do spray. Do not be scared because you do not want to be scraping when it's time to clean, okay? So I went ahead and layered it. I put the potatoes all flat on there. Then I put some on the side. Uh, I put some on the side because I knew sauce would be able to cover it. So if you don't think so, then don't do it because you do not want no hard potatoes like I said. So I did everything in layers. Once I layered out my first batch, I went ahead and scooped in some sauce and you know I just made sure it was covering everything then I went in with some sour cream to layer all that on top you want to make sure that there's no clumps of sour cream because who wants to eat a spoonful of sour cream I'm sorry I don't but yeah so I went ahead and did that and then after that I topped it with some cheddar cheese go ahead and put that remaining sauce on top you want to make sure that you cover everything spray it around if you have to then we're going to top it with the rest of our cheddar cheese and some parmesan cheese i forgot to mention before that i was also putting parmesan cheese between the layers so yeah once you go ahead and fully coat that you want to go ahead and wrap it up put it in that oven for 400 degrees for an hour after that hour you want to go ahead and pick it for the toothpick to make sure those potatoes run if they're done you want to go ahead and take that top off and let it sit in there for 20 minutes so that cheese can go up okay
right, y'all, now for this steak. So you want to make sure for a good steak, you want to make sure that you always hit it with a generous amount of salt and pepper, okay, y'all? A generous amount. You want to make sure that you're packing that in, okay? Take your time with this because you're going to have to do this on both sides. And for it to be tasting good, I'm pretty sure you want to do it. So, y'all, I also, like I said, I cannot let the complete season go for my life. Uh, I went ahead and sprinkled some complete season off camera. I don't know where that put went, but yeah. Like I said, you want to make sure that you pack that all in so when you're moving it around, it's not flaking off, especially when you flip them over, you don't want to flip off. like our steaks well okay so i went in with some olive oil and y'all you do not want to add your steak in until that pan is smoking okay because you know that it's hot you want to go ahead and let it get that nice brown sear on the other side and once it does you want to go ahead and flip it over y'all so i added in butter i went in as i you know as i go if i see i needed more i added more i also went in with some rosemary and some garlic and then i put that until it was done Y'all, this steak was not dry and it was not tough, okay, at all. It was absolutely delicious, so leave me alone about my little steak. If you are scared of having some dry steak, I suggest that you continuously face it. Do not let your pan get dry and do not let your meat get dry, okay? As long as you continue to base it, it's going to never get dry. Once it dries out, you're, you're done. Just go ahead and throw it away. Scalp potatoes after they come out the oven, they're done. I'm gonna go ahead and let them brown. Look at that! Oh, y'all, that is so good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this video. Thank you guys again for giving me the 13k on TikTok. Y'all are amazing. We literally grew 2,000 followers in one day. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you tried this recipe, please let me know how you like it. And yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.